I want you to listen to this audio clip before and after I turn on an EQ boost centered at four kilohertz. Did you hear the E sound when I engage the EQ? There are actually cues like this for each of the ISO octave frequency bands. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you those cues so that you can train your ears for mixing. The information I'm about to share with you in this video had a massive impact on my mixing and listening skills. So be sure to watch till the end and download your free copy of the Ear Training Quick Start Guide at audiouniversityonline.com slash ear training guide. Finding the right frequencies was mostly a guessing game for me the first few years I started recording and producing music. Eventually, I learned the trick to sweep for frequencies with a parametric EQ until I heard the problematic frequency, and then you take that frequency away with the EQ. This technique is useful, and I still use variations of that every once in a while, but you've really got to be careful when using this method. Applying a 12 dB boost to anything is bound to make it sound terrible, so it can become a slippery slope when you go hunting for problems that aren't really there. As I showed you at the beginning of the video, 4 kHz corresponds to the vowel sound E. We can actually assign a vowel sound to each of the octave frequencies between 250 Hz and 4 kHz. This is exactly what's covered in the free ear training guide I mentioned at the beginning of the video. 250 Hz, ooh. 500 Hz, o. Oh. 1 kHz, ah. 2 kHz, a. 4 kHz, e. I think this demonstration will be helpful for you. Right here, I've got a talk box, which is a speaker inside a box. And the sound from that speaker is redirected through and out the end of this tube. If I turn up the level, we'll hear that signal being picked up by the microphone. And then this microphone is sent to a frequency analyzer plugin. So let's see what the balance of frequencies coming out of this tube sounds like. So as we see, the mid frequencies have a more or less even distribution of energy between them. Now I'm gonna put the tube in my mouth and make an ah sound, and we should see a buildup of energy around one kilohertz. As you saw, I didn't hit it perfectly at first. I had to slowly tune it up to perfectly align with one kilohertz. This is just a part of the practice. You definitely don't need a talk box to practice this method. It's just a helpful tool for me to demonstrate these cues for you. For the frequencies above four kilohertz, we're going to listen for sibilance. Sibilance is the hissing quality of a sound often used to describe the S sound. To identify 8 kHz and 16 kHz, we're going to dial in to the quality of the sibilance. 8 kHz is a pure S, while 16 kHz is a bit sharper, like an S mixed with a T. The frequencies below 250 Hz don't really correlate with vowel sounds, but instead to haptic sensations. Haptics are the felt vibrations of sound throughout the body. You might have experienced haptic sound at a concert with powerful speakers and subwoofers, or at a fireworks display. If you listen carefully to these clips with full range speakers, you can feel the low frequency energy throughout the body. I was taught to hear 125 Hz around the chest and 63 Hz around the abdomen.
low frequencies do take a bit more practice and they're much more difficult to hear on small speakers. So don't worry if these are more difficult to feel at first. Now that you're aware of the sound or sensation associated with each octave, you have reference points that will become like second nature to you as you practice. For many people, just hearing about this method for the first time can make an immediate impact on their listening skills. Let me know in the comments if that's the case for you. One of the best ways to practice is to simply listen to music that you think sounds good. It's even better if you can listen to great sounding music on a system that you're familiar with. That way you can really dial in the idea of what balanced sounds like to you on your system. If you have a strong reference built for what sounds good, you'll instantly know when you hear too much or too little of one frequency or another. Another free way to practice is by downloading the guide that I mentioned earlier. Just follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the ear training guide at audiouniversityonline.com slash ear training guide. If you're ready to see a more practical use of this method, check out the video that's on your screen right now. I'll see you there.